Hello again, friends. Welcome to case study number 30. This is a young adult coming in with a chief complaint of insomnia. Very common complaint for patients coming into the clinic. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I appreciate all the support I can get and I thank all those of you who have already stepped up to donate and those of you who are considering it. Okay, this is a long uh, vignette here, so pay attention. Make sure that you're paying close attention to all of the complaints, not just the chief complaint. We got a 24-year-old Hispanic man coming into the clinic complaining of difficulty sleeping over the last three weeks. He says that it takes him at least an hour to fall asleep after getting into bed, and he's got difficulty staying asleep. Anytime you got a patient coming in saying that they have a hard time sleeping, you want to know, is it problems falling asleep? Is it problem staying asleep or is it both? Uh, he says that he gets about four to six hours of sleep per night. His age, probably seven to eight hours ideal. He's tried several over-the-counter options, including diphenhydramine and melatonin. He feels that his diffi the, the difficulty sleeping is interfering with his daily functioning. He denies napping during the day, important to know, and says that he spends most of his time with sketchy videos and Anki decks, oh my gosh, and rarely leaves the home or spends time with friends. His appetite is described as poor, and he has to force himself to eat. He says that he's been overall stressed and down lately as his grandfather passed away three months ago. Review of systems is otherwise unremarkable. He's got no significant past medical history and is generally in good health. He is a first-year medical student. He occasionally binge drinks when he really needs to sleep and occasionally drinks at parties. He doesn't smoke or use recreational drugs. He's not sexually active and mentions that his boyfriend recently broke up with him, which he describes as devastating. Family history is unremarkable, he's on no medications, and his vitals are within normal limits. Okay, so what do we know about this patient? He's got a lot of psych issues, and he's got insomnia. So we're going to do a good physical exam. Uh, he's fatigued appearing, naturally. You would be too if you're only getting four to six hours uh, a night. Um, skin is fine, HENT is fine. De definitely want to look at that thyroid um, just because of the, uh, the fatigue uh, chest and lungs, heart, abdomen is fine, neurologically non-focal, and psych shows normal mental status. Okay, so a fairly normal physical exam. What is our differential? Primary insomnia is the most likely cause of insomnia, just in general. It's usually idiopathic, um, a lot of times due to poor sleep hygiene. Major depressive disorder, we got to consider it in this guy. He's gone through some life changes, but he's also doesn't have a good appetite. Um, he's not leaving the house that much. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on there. So we may need to do a little bit of digging to see if he fits the criteria for depression. Uh, there's also a possibility he could have an adjustment disorder with depressed mood. This would be an alternative psychiatric diagnosis. If he doesn't fit the criteria for major depression, he has gone through some life changes. His grandpa died. He started med school. He's went through a breakup. Lots of changes that could trigger uh, this insomnia as, you know, sort of part of a psychiatric picture. We have to consider anytime you're considering psych diagnoses and anytime you've got insomnia, you got to consider thyroid issues and then the possibility that he may be anemic, which is causing this, you know, sort of fatigue going on. So our initial workup is going to be a depression index. That is a possible order on CCS. Um, so what you're basically doing is kind of your, your PHQ-9 or whatever that you would normally do if you suspect depression. We're going to get a CBC, a BMP, and a TSH. So his depression index is 29 out of 50. This indicates moderate depression. CBC, BMP, and TSH are all normal. So this patient is diagnosed with major depressive disorder. The depression index will uh, will ask about all those SIGI cap symptoms. Um, so the treatment for major depression is an SSRI and psychotherapy. Those two things you will always do in every single patient. You'll give them an antidepressant and psychotherapy. Uh, reassure the patient. Uh, provide a referral to psychiatry, but you need to know that you've got to do the SSRI, and then you'll follow up in one to two weeks after you start the therapy. Major depressive disorder is a clinical syndrome involving mood and neurovegetative functions like the difficulty sleeping and the not wanting to get up and move and the eating issues. 
uh, as well as cognition and behavior. Lifetime prevalence is about 10%. That means everybody has got a 10% risk of developing major depression at some point in their life. Insomnia is a very common manifestation of major depression. Almost 90% of patients with depression will have insomnia. Some others will have hypersomnia where they're sleeping more than they want to. Uh, but sleep disturbances is one of the diagnostic criteria of major depression. The DSM-5 lays out a lot of criteria for major depression. What's important, though, is that they need to have the symptoms nearly every day for at least two weeks. Now, you need to have, this sounds really obvious, but got to point it out, you need to have a depressed mood or some kind of lack of interest in order to be depressed, and then you have to have five other criteria, which are really those SIGI caps, uh, symptoms. Prior to making a diagnosis, you have to exclude medical disorders. That goes for any psychiatric diagnosis, particularly the thyroid here. The cornerstone of management is an SSRI and psychotherapy, but if the patient has active suicidal ideation or they attempted suicide uh, recently or before they came in, you need to admit them. CCS may test you on that, so that's very important. These are the criteria for major depressive disorder. I included the, uh, the letters of the SIGI CAPS um, mnemonic right here. This is taken straight from DSM-5. This is the SIGI CAPS mnemonic. You can review this if you want. The common differentials. Primary insomnia is a diagnosis of exclusion. So exclude all psychiatric or medical causes and you probably have primary insomnia. So the treatment here would be uh, behavioral, it would be sleep hygiene, uh, and stuff like that. Um, you, you would treat this by uh, providing something, uh, you know, like melatonin or Ambien or something like that. Adjustment disorder was our alternative diagnosis here, but he fit the criteria for major depression. Hypothyroidism does cause fatigue, but it would cause hypersomnia. They're sleeping a lot, they're taking naps throughout the day, and then they have those systemic signs, which you are familiar with, with hypothyroidism, and they would have a high TSH on labs. Hyperthyroidism would cause fatigue with insomnia, uh, although a lot of times they're more energetic. Um, they also have systemic signs that correspond with hyperthyroidism, and they would have a low TSH. And anemia would typically not cause uh, insomnia it would cause the fatigue, and they would also tend to have pallor, uh, and that would be seen on CBC as a low hemoglobin. So to recap, major depressive disorder is a clinical syndrome, including mood, neurovegetative, cognition, and behavioral symptoms, lifetime prevalence of 10%. Insomnia is perhaps the most common manifestation of major depression, along with the subjective mood issues. Suicide risk management is critical. You need to determine whether the patient is a danger to themselves or others. If you're in doubt, admit. Admit the patient. If the patient has ever had a diagnosis of a manic or hypomanic episode, even if they fit the criteria for major depression right now, if they've had a manic episode in the past, the diagnosis is actually bipolar. The cornerstone of management is an SSRI and psychotherapy. If they fail the SSRI, you can, you can consider another SSRI, or you can consider other antidepressants like an SNRI, Effexor, um, or other antidepressants like Wellbutrin. Uh, I like to go for those drugs initially. It might not be evidence-based, but I like to go to those drugs initially, especially when dealing with young men, uh, because erectile dysfunction and anorgasmia are serious side effects with those drugs, and they're a bummer. You know, they're not going to they're they're not going to uh, comply with with those medications if, if they have symptoms like that, uh, side effects like that. So sometimes I find it useful to just go for effects or uh, but do remember that with bupropion or Wellbutrin, seizure disorder is a major contraindication. Might as well throw that in right now. Um, Venlafaxine or Effexor is stimulating, uh, so it would not be a good option in this patient because he has insomnia. SSRIs would be ideal if we could go for it. Uh, you'll follow this patient up in one to two weeks to reevaluate symptoms and uh, see how things are going with the, uh, with the treatment.